Hey everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost and this, it is junk journal craft chat time. It's Friday. We are doing some fun, goofy things with little bits of paper and we're going to be picking two scrappy contest winners and, and I'm going to play with stickers today. That's right. I haven't played with stickers, but we're going to make some goofy things with stickers. There's a lot of fun things you can do with stickers that don't involve peeling the back off. Yay. <laughs> okay, so one of them is making, yes, you guessed it, our old favorite, an altered paper clip. I'm going to take paper clip of choice. I'm going to make a little book-like fold here just for fun. Maybe, oh, maybe an inch and a half. I can, I can tear it. I can tear it. It's my paper. I am going to stick this, open it up like a little book ski, stick the small loop on the inside, and then come down with the Fabrifix glue to glue it all in place and now we have our base and this is just there's 101 ways to make these this is just one of them and now I'm going to thrill you with the amazing maneuver I'm going to do I'm going to take this sticker is that one sticker or two it looks like two that's no, one and you could sit here for an hour and peel the back off I'm not I'm just gonna stick the whole thing here with glue why would you do that Pam because I don't feel like sitting here for an hour trying to get the back off um, I'm not very good at that um, these fingers be, make it even fingers. These fingers nails make it even harder to get the backs off. I'm just doing that, and I'm calling it a day. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Maybe I'll ink it because I'm here and I have the inker, and it's kind of making it a little cuter. And you can make these really quickly. That's I guess what I want to show you. It's like very quick, very cute, ready to paperclip your way to magnificence. Okay, well, all right, we'll make one more just because you asked. I have this really cool mushroom. It's a little translucent mu mushroom. Translucent. He looks very nice on here. Let's see how he looks on here. He's looking very nice on there too. I think he maybe pops a little bit better here. So we will take this. We will fold it in half. Fatter than our mushroom. We'll tear it because we can and it's quick and easy. We will take a paper clip of choice. Pop it on the inside. Small loop on the inside. Fabrifix glue. You could also use glue stick or anything here. It doesn't really matter. Whoop. Okay. Oh boy, Pam. Can you not cause mayhem? Close it. Close it. Ink it while we're here. Inking while we're here. Just because we're here. And we're inking. And then we are going to do the exact same thing. Okay, what's oh this is the front. See it's more intense on this side? Let's put it to that side. If you want the translucent look, use that side. If you want the intense white side, use this side. Whoop. Use this side. Okay. Um, there we go, just gluing that right on there. Not fussing with the back, taking the easy way out. So if you have pretty stickers and you're you're so frustrated, this this is what you do. <laughs> really, it is what you do. Okay. Very nice. Cute, right? Okay, we have two done. I think that's pretty impressive. In you know, ten seconds or less, we have those. All right, so let's go to our our questions, we have uh, Diane Gauss asks, Hey Pam, if your punches get dull, is there a way to make them sharp again? Love, love, love your videos. Thank you, Diane. Um, not that I've ever found. I've tried the aluminum foil technique where you punch the aluminum foil. Some people swear by it and say, say it works. I've never had luck with that. They, it's just as jammed as I it was before or dull as before. So I end up just chucking the punch. There may be, you know, maybe knife sharpening people have ways if you can totally disassemble. I don't know, it'd be like very complicated. But um, I have not found a successful way. Also, if they get stuck, I have heard people punching wax paper over and over again to get a little bit of the wax on the edges of the cutting area, and that sometimes makes things punch more smoothly. Also, if your things get jammed a lot, try putting, like if you have a very thin book page, do I have an example, do I have an example? No, of course not. Um, okay, like this. Like this is a very thin, um, probably a Russian or Ukrainian book page. And it might get jammed in there because it's not thick enough. Now there's a the tipping point. There's a Rubicon. You cross and you can't go back. Well, you could. You just pull everything out and start again. But there's a perfect amount of thickness that that punch likes to bite into. And when you find that magic little tipping point, your world suddenly opens up and you can punch till the cows come home. Not the same thing as a dull punch, but a jammed punch. Okay, so dull versus jammed. Okay. Here we go. Oh, this is pretty. Sometimes these black and white images are the prettiest ones ever. It doesn't even matter if there's a fold in your coffee dyed paper. I think it would look really cool just like over the fold. Oh, that looks really cool. I like that. All right. So you know what? I, this is not even going to be a paper clip. No, this is going to be a thing that I might glue in a journal someday because it's just so darn pretty. It might be like a page trim. Oh, look at this is the intense side. I just found the intense side. This is the 
not intense side, so that's what we're going to glue. And this is, it feels like an acetate or something, and the Fabrifix will hold this. Hello, aunt. Who's not paying rent? Go away. All right. All right, there we go. So I'm just going to leave that as a Dunsey. And I, that can be a belly band. It could be a side tuck. It could be so many things. So just, it can go down the spine. Wouldn't that look pretty on the spine? We're going to be making something very soon. That I mean, this is too wide, but you know what I mean? You could do something like that. So when you see things like that, just, just make them. Yeah, just put them together and you'll figure it out later. It's okay. Um, what else do we have? Uh, just me asks, where do you find all of your very old papers and such? They're so cool. You always find a way to make the most perfect embellishments with anything and everything that you have on hand. Love it. Um, thanks, Just Me. Um, okay. My list is, um, you may have heard me say this before, but I find my stuff. I always start small and close first. Self. Self's closet. Self's attic. self basement. Self house. Family rummage through all their crap. Sorry, did I just say that? I said that. Oh my gosh. Their stuff. Don't say that other word. It's not a nice word. They have things that are very precious to them. Ask permission or if they're not home, go through their stuff. <laughs> Cut apart their dresses and pop off all their buttons on all their shirts. They'll love you. And, um, okay, that's not old papers. Okay. So basically self, family, friends, Garage sales, yard sales, estate sales, consignment shops, antique malls, uh, flea markets, auctions, Etsy, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist. Did I name everything? You know. Oh, and then after a while, if you start talking to people, especially in these shops, and you tell them what you're looking for, they'll start putting stuff aside for you. Um, if you buy things in bulk, they'll love you even more. So just say when you get a, a paper accumulation, call me, I'll buy the whole box from you and they will love you because they, they want to move that stuff through. Um, there you go. And look for businesses, businesses, maybe going out of business, or maybe they're getting rid of all their paper supplies because they're going completely online. Um, they're happy for you to take the stuff. So there's another good resource. Did I say thrift stores? Did I not say thrift stores? If I, yeah, consignment stores and thrift stores. Um, tons of stuff in those. Try different ones. Try mom and pop. Try the hospital ones. Try the church ones. Try all the different kinds of thrift stores. You're going to find different things at different places because each place will accept different items. Okay. That was very fancy, Pam. Make sure you put your hearts on here. I'm hearting the ones I've answered already, so I know not to re-answer those. Okay. Jackie Gregor or Gregor says, you mentioned a while back, um, he would show us how to dress up an ugly pen. Did I miss that? I have some pen videos already, so go to my main YouTube channel page and, and, and where the little magnifying glass icon is, that's the search field, type in pen or pencil, and they'll come up, I think, and um, we should do some more of those. So, uh, Sunny, write that down. That's a fun idea because there's a million and one thing, ways to decorate a pen or a pencil to accompany your junk journal, which is a nice accoutrement for your junk journal. Um, okay. Layla Gajewski. Gajewski. I think I got it right. Uh, thank you for sharing. I have a room like that. You know what she means about that, right? My messy craft room. Um, I have a room like that with quilting supplies plus other things and doubt if everything will be used. Now I am starting to collect junk journaling supplies. Thanks to, to so many wonderful videos. Um, oh, what am I to do? Uh, why did you not mention the plaque from YouTube for 100,000 subscribers? Oh, as I was panning around? Yeah. Um, um, yes, good eye. That's what that was. Okay, <laughs> there it is. Um, love your gift of gab. Always so cheerful and positive. Thanks. You were very sweet. Um, next one is Judy Lamb. She asks, how do you manage the million things you do? Your cabinets are so beautiful and utilitarian. Look forward to the renewal. Yes, so do I. So do I, Laurel. No, it was not. It was, it was Judy. Judy, I look forward to organization again in here. And it's such a fleeting thing. That's all I can say. It's such a fleeting thing. Why? Why? I don't know. Um, I'm just going to make another paper clip because... It just gets, oh no, I'm doing it out of order. It's, it's, it's easier if you put the paper clip on first, because if you have the glue down first, it gets a little messy. So how do I know? How do I know? Watch my previous videos, you'll see. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. There we go, squashing it into place. Now this is kind of cool. This is a sticker. 
of an old sewing machine. And I think it's going to fit on there. Oh, it does. And I just think that looks so cool the way it is. And it's already pre-cut out. It's like, the thing about stickers is like, it's somebody already did all the fussy cutting for you. You see that? They went all, they, and they were perfect. And, and you don't have to. That's why I like doing this little secret sticker trick. And now it is possible an edge of a sticker might curl up. But listen, these have been sitting there forever. Ever. Nobody has curled up on its own. Now, if I'm fluffing through a book or something, maybe I might curl an edge. I don't think so. I, I'm not I'm not losing sleep over that. I think it's going to be okay. So I have a pre-fussy cut sewing machine on here, and I think it just looks dandy. I think I'm going to use my squirt technique to reawaken the ink that is so saturated, this little guy, because I've used him so much. I know he's got a ton of ink in him. I don't need, Who needs that pad? Not this girl. There we go. Yeah, okay. Um... It is 100 degrees in here, or I, I, it's just 100 degrees in here. Okay. Um, Laurel the Crafty Crone says, if you own the book, can you use the pictures out of the book? Out of it in books you sell. I think that's what she was trying to say. And it's my understanding that, yes, you, if you own the book, you can take apart the book and use the pages from the book in the things you sell. What you, this is for copyright stuff. You can't photocopy or scan and print and then use those images because then you're using somebody's artwork. Now, it would be like if, I mean, just think, I mean, whether you take the book apart or not has nothing to do with it. If you bought a book and you want to sell that book as a used book, it's the same thing. It's not illegal to sell a used book. Like you're selling all those pictures and all that writing together in one thing. To somebody else used bookstores do it we do it garage sales i mean it's 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 all the like thrift books online all the used books things they all do it they don't have to get copyright permission to sell the actual thing i hope that clears that up i am not a copyright expert check with all your expensive attorneys <laughs> okay um but that is my understanding and there's probably exceptions to everything you know what i mean like everything so just grain of salt um, okay, Pam, where are the digital yoga bunnies, please? I think it's called Bunny Loves Yoga. Because somebody already had the name Yoga Bunny. So look it up in my digi kits as Bunny Loves Yoga. I think that's what it's called because I had to come up with a different way of doing it. Okay. Um, Pinky Love asks, why you ink everything? Because I like it. I think it gives like a nice vintage look. That's why. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to ink. Inking is not mandatory. Um, inking was very popular a few years ago, and I would say that maybe people don't ink as much today. They're doing other things. You can also use sewing or stitching or markers or gelatos or anything or nothing. This is totally your world to play in. So if, if, if inking does not fill your heart with joy, back away from the inking. Yes, don't, don't do it. Just don't do it. Don't feel the pressure from everybody who's inking. No, 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 no. No, you just back away and you say, that's fine for you guys. You have your fun with your little ink, ink pads and your daubers and you know, all those little tips and tricks. You know, not for me. No, not doing it. Not doing it. Don't like it. Don't like the inky fingers. Don't maybe like the way it smells. Don't like the way it looks. Everything feels dirty and grungy and yucky. Some people love that. I do. And, um, it's okay not to ink. There is no, there is no, uh, rule. You have to ink everything. Um, Tiffany Doran asks, uh, where are we? Okay. Tiffany Doran asks, uh, can you do some videos with vellum? Uh, do you like working with vellum? Um, I, okay. I don't really like working with vellum because I have a, um, okay. Here's a, a little trick. Actually, I just thought of it. Sometimes when you cut out a piece of vellum, which is not unlike a clear piece of acetate, but maybe a little like frostier, foggier, um, and you put glue on it and then you glue it down, you can see the glue line. It looks sort of goofy, if you ask me. Um, I have seen people use tape, the clear, not the, like the two-sided tape with the little, you know, zzz, 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 that kind of tape. Um, and that seems to work okay. Uh, what you can do, though, is you can sew around, the, like let's say you have a square for a pocket or a rectangle for a pocket. You can sew around there and then glue the threads to your paper, which will obscure that little glue line from the eyes that are looking from over here. Just a thought. Um, actually, I just thought of that. 
I, I don't think I've ever sewn one. Maybe I have. Yeah, no, I have sewn vellum. I have. Because I, I made some little shelf, like shelves on a page so you could tuck a lot of little things in. Okay. Okay. Uh, Tiffany Doran says also, ha, hello, Pam and Sunny. I love your quote. If it is moving, it is not a hoard. <laughs> I live by that. Uh, do you think every crafter has a hoard of supplies? Um, now, technically, okay, let's discuss this. This is very deep. Is it not a hoard if it's organized? Is it just a collection of supplies? But if it's like not organized, maybe it, it's more of a hoard. I don't know. You tell me. What are your thoughts? I think it's a hoard either way. I'm going for an organized hoard or or the chaos hoard. Oh boy, I think I'm more in chaos hoard right now. I'm like halfway. I'm like it's been worse. I'll, I'll be very honest. It's been and it's been a lot better before too. So we can get back there. We can go forward to better places. That's where we're gonna go. Okay. Uh, Lisa Green says, "Hmm, just wondering how many rolls of packing tape are needed. Me thinks you have more than enough. I go through packing tape like water." <clears throat> Um, I can never seem to have enough around, so I buy it in big quantity. Um, Rosemary, uh, she said, Miss Pam, I thought you were hiring somebody to help you get organized. What happened? No, no, <laughs> no. Uh, you have a lot, and that is overwhelming for me. If I live closer to you, I would help you get organized, but I don't. That's very sweet of you. Thank you. Um, I would love to. I would love to hire somebody, but that I'm never going to hire somebody to help me get. I need to clean up my own nonsense. That, that I feel personally responsible for the state of affairs, and also, how is anybody else going to know where to put stuff so I can find it again? Let's face it. This gal's got to clean it up so she knows where it is. She'll still forget where she put stuff, but she's got half a crack at it. You know what I mean? That's all I got. Um, ain't nobody cleaning this but me. Um, I think that was lofty thinking. I must have been dreaming or something. Um, Lee Ann Taz Ladies Treasure says, can we come shopping in your craft room? LOL. Okay. <laughs> That's actually one reason why I do the scrappy contests. Uh, I think you, you, you know, I generate a lot of scraps, whether they be fabric or paper. And this gal can only use so much. And it came to a point of I don't want to just throw the stuff out. I'd rather give it away to you guys. And I know you'll do fun things with it. And it's always more fun to play in other people's scraps and, you know, stuff you have already, right? So, um, there you go. There you go. Um, Pamela Jensen asks, have you ever took apart a Bible to use? Yes. Um, and many Bibles are falling apart. And many Bibles do go to the book shredder. So... I think mine is a better alternative. It will at least see the light of day. It might turn into collage for a, um, maybe somebody wants to make a Bible journal. Um, they might use little pieces and parts. It might bring things to mind that otherwise would not be thought about. So I think in an odd way, it's sort of spreading the word. Okay. Um, I'm fine with it. Um, not everybody will be fine with that, but that, I'm okay with that too. Okay. Um, Alita Moss. Then, hello, Pam. I love your videos. You're so much fun. I'm wondering about how to make my Epson printer make brighter prints. Mine turned out duller than I feel they should be. Any tips? Um, yeah, I would say two things. Um, either switch to an ink with more bright intensity, and there are different inks out there that you can buy. I don't know if you're using um, um, Epson actual ink because it comes out pretty good. Uh, but I've also used other inks and it comes out pretty good. But I think where the kicker is, um, if you're, I don't know if you're using my digi kits or you're using just things that you're actually collecting yourself uh, in digital format, but play with the contrast and the color saturation to brighten things up and then print them out and see if that gives you the lift and the pop that you're looking for. That should help. Um, all right. Uh, why does my <laughs> Twilight Dream 1000 says, why does my bedroom look like your craft room? I literally uh, have a lot of things you have, except yours is more organized than mine. Oh, that's funny. See, I know we're all airing our dirty laundry. I love you guys. Um, Elise KT says, such great ideas. What size were those flower punches? Oh, I think I answered that the other day because um, I do a craft chat podcast where I answer um, crafty questions and I think I'm running into those right now oh yep yep i recognize these because i why because i did not heart them there you go so i'm going to scroll down past the ones i answered um 
Oh, uh, Christy Maynard says, I'm wondering, have you ever used poker chips or guitar picks in a journal? I think those are great ideas. I think I have used poker chips, but not guitar picks. I haven't really come across a stash of guitar picks, but that's another interesting resource. I think if you dremeled them, and Jessica Rapp has probably done this because she likes to work with all sorts of interesting little items, found items, and then she'll make these really cool spine dangles or little dangly things from her journals. Um, poker chips, guitar picks. Do you have some crafty ideas on how to use them? Those are my ideas. There you go. Um, if they're too thick to put in the journal or I mean, a guitar pick, you could probably tuck into a pocket or a tuck or something like that. Um, or those would actually make cute little page tabs, wouldn't they? Yeah, I think so. Or poker, chip, poker chips would actually too, but they might be a little thick. They can sometimes be pretty thick. Maybe coming down the spine, maybe you could spray paint, like put a bunch on the cover and then spray paint the whole cover like white or something like that. And oh, you could actually have a lot of fun with that. Um, Sherry Peterson says, I just love the text on your book page. Do you know what language it is? I want to search for a book with text like that. Dag I, I don't know what the page was. Um, but this is the closest foreign language page that I have. Was it this one? Because it's here. Is that Russian? Is that Ukrainian? Does anybody know? I'll bet you do. Somebody will say. Okay. Maybe it's Greek. I don't know. Um, yeah, foreign languages. I just love the way they look, especially the alternative, um, alphabets. I think they look really cool. And yeah, I know not what I look at. That's, that's my life story with this stuff. Um, Sherry Peterson, I just, oh, that, I just did hers. Lorraine W says craftiness and a grammar lesson. Who knew? Okay. I, I, yeah, I don't know what's in there, but there you go. Um, uh, Sela, 1292 says, I've only found your channel recently, and I have a question. They look like fun to make, but what is the purpose of a junk journal? All right. That's a great question. Um, um, it's everything or nothing. It all depends on you or the recipient. It's a process of learning how to make a book from scratch, and then you can fill it with whatever you like, whether it just be writing or little mementos, uh, quotes, poems, uh, tickets to plays. Maybe you're going to put pockets and tucks and things like that where you can tuck little things in. I like to fill mine with old papers, also known as old ephemera or old ephemera. It's known as ephemera, um, which I guess technically means throwaway paper, but I think we kind of turn it into some kind of old vintage antique, really interesting stuff. Like, like I'll, I'll just grab something. <laughs> grab anything, Pam. Anything. Okay. So, like a postcard from days gone by, is that from 1910, um, would be a piece of ephemera. And here's a handwritten letter from 1893, I think. So that would be a piece of ephemera. I don't know why you would consider throwing away a letter. I mean, or th I mean, I would probably save this postcard. Somebody did, apparently, since 1910. So it was not thrown away. So I don't know. Does that actually qualify? I just kind of lump it all together as old paper stuff. Yeah. Maybe I'm using the wrong term, but there you go. Um, oh, so, okay. So yeah, you can do whatever you want with a junk journal. It's, um, log your dreams, your recipes, uh, ideas, to-do lists, um, you know, themed journals. I mean, you can, you can just go to town and have fun. I mean, there is no limit other than your imagination. Um, Debbie Luden asks, after I posted my career question, I went back through all your videos to the very first one that came up. It was a tour of your journals in your trunk. It looks as though you have been making journals for a long, the way she wrote it, long time. How long exactly? Okay. I'm, I always try to figure that out too. Um, I always say about three or four years ago, but that's not true anymore because I started the paper outpost the business in 2019. And I think I said that back then, like it was three or four years before that. So you do the math. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yes, and they were all little learning adventures. And the first ones were structurally not sound, but I had so much fun making them. And I kept thinking I can do better. I can improve. If I can just figure out that one little step, that one little sticking point, life will be grand. And I kept figuring out these little sticking points as I went trying to find an easier way to get through them. And that's how it all happened. But thank you for going through all those videos. That's a lot of videos. Um, Debbie Luden also has, Pam, don't know if you ever mentioned this, but what did you do before creating junk journals career-wise? 
Um, I was a family practice doctor, and I also teach a medical class online. I, st I still teach a medical class online. I don't practice anymore. Um, retired from practice. And uh, I did a lot of other things, like I had a soap business, I used to do community theater, and I ran a ticket business, um, goofy things like that. Trying to use the left brain and the right brain through life, happy, co-managing everything together. Um, do Paula Morris asked, do you use copy paper or card stock? Yes, I use both. Uh, it just depends on what I'm using or, or making, and uh, I love both. I have big piles of both. Um, Denise Howard, I love your nails, Pam. Thank you. Uh, you must use a strong protective coating on them for all the crafting you do. What kind of polished coating do you use? Um, okay, my nails are the dip. You know, it's like that powder stuff that they keep dipping in. And it, it's really hard. And I asked them to make them a little extra thick on the thick side because I'm really hard on my hands and doing this stuff. Like I, I use my nails to as tools. Probably not a good idea, but I do. And... Um, the ink, the, this kind of distress ink and the oxide ink comes right off. I mean, it doesn't stain the nails at all, so it makes it um, um, nice. And then they, they just coat it with some kind of clear gel polish or something like that at the end. But um, they're like industrial strength. They're really strong. Um, okay, so there you go. Autumn Jones asks, do you ever get days where you're totally clueless on what to start next? Yes, all the time. All the time. Uh, I'm having an issue and wonder how to get out of this blank mind. Thanks. By the way, I love every video. You're amazing. Oh, you're so sweet. Okay, so I have an idea book, which is a journal that I made. And I'll just give it a look at it. It's nothing fancy. It looks like something that, you know, you found, like, in the cellar. got dripped on by the furnace or something. It's actually coffee-dyed um, flower sack, but I, I like that stuff. And I, when I get an idea for future videos, I just write them down. Write them down. Capture them. There's different things. Did ideas for podcasts. Ideas for... Um, you know, newsletter, things like that. Just capture, 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 capture. I used to get a lot of ideas when I was going to sleep at night. My my brain would just start playing with paper in my mind. I'm like, oh, we need to write that down or try that. And I, I couldn't always write it down because it was dark. So I learned this little memory peg system where um, you can link these things onto these memory pegs. You can look it up. It's called memory peg memorization technique. Uh, but you can you can literally memorize thousands of things. I used it through school. It really helped me a lot. So if I'm falling asleep and I think of two or three items, I link them onto the first few memory pegs in my mind, and then I can easily go to sleep, and they'll still be stuck on there when I wake up in the morning in my mind, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember the toothpick idea or something, and I can I can then write it down in the book. You know, then it'll actually make it to the book. But capture, capture when you have the ideas. Or... You know, just watch some other people's videos because what's going to happen is you're going to see somebody do something and you're going to make it, but you're going to put your own spin on it and you're going to have fun in the process. So sometimes we, we get energized or motivated from each other, which is kind of nice because we self-propel and we, and we um, help propel others along the way. And we all do this as a community, which is kind of cool. So also the Facebook group, if you want to go check out, um, See how, to see how other people took these ideas and ran with them. People post, um, you know, their versions of these ideas on there from these videos, and you can see how people, you know, had fun with it or did something goofy or tried this or tried that or different colors or different materials. And um, it's a very inspirational place, so I highly recommend you che uh, check it out. Come join us. And Autumn Jones, I think we'll wrap it up with this question. Do you ever get... Oh, I know I answered that already. Okay. Uh, do you only do the one side, said Clara McKenzie. Oh, she's talking about these, the spray painted, um, not spray painted, the, I use stencils. This is on regular copy paper, and I just use some distress ink across here, or dense coffee dye. Very nice. Um, uh, food color, you can do it too, with water. Nice and concentrated. Um, and I only do it on one side. And now there is, it does soak through, so you get an image on both sides. This is a one side spray. This is the side that received the ink. And this is the bleed through on the other side. And it, and it must separate the actual color a little bit. So that's why it looks like a different color. But it's not. It's the same color. Okay. There you go. So what do we have for you? We're reminding you that, yes, it is still May of 2023. And there is a fundal special. You get a triple bonus, a 1627 year old book page, um, a vintage card, and a big 
Vic, no, a Victorian card and a vintage ticket automatically will be added to your fundle purchase, which can be purchased in my Etsy shop. 100, 100 plus pieces of unique and interesting papers to make junk journals with. A lot of them old papers. Very cool. And um, what else? Um, you don't need a code or a coupon. And that's going on until May of 2023 ends. And they're poof gone. Okay. Sunshine? No, 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 not yet. We're picking our, not yet, Sunny. Not yet. We're picking our winners. We're winner, winner. Oh, okay. Let me get to the right page. All right. Let me just bring this over here. Okay, here we go, here we go. And the first one is going to be, okay, so here is the deal. Hang on, I had something pop up there. Okay, here's the deal. The deal is if you win, you gotta let me know by next Thursday that you won and tell me whether you won the fabric or the paper scrappy contest. If you wanna enter the contest, all you do is you put a comment in the video for this week and then the winner will be drawn for next week okay so there you go here we go here you go watch see if we can see your name are you there are you there are you there are you there lisa ann there you go congratulations you win the fabric scrappy contest so you know what to do all right we're going to do this again pick another winner and this is for the paper scrappy contest here we go here we go and, and sherry liberto congratulations you know what to do there we go. Sunshine, you're up. Come on up. Okay, I'm coming. I'm right here. I haven't gone anywhere. I'm in the vicinity. I'm in the building. I'm coming. Yeah, it's like that scene from, I think it's like, um, I'm running in like Johnny Carson would be coming down the hall. It was that David Letterman. I can't remember. Okay, so here we go. All right, here we go. Yeah. Hello, everybody. It's Sunshine. Yes. Um, Cub. Pup reporter here. Oh, there she goes with the ears. Uh, I kind of like it. It feels good. Um, but it kind of looks like a cat. Or what? what is that? What do I look like with no ears? I Oh, you know what I look like? I'm a seal. I'm a little baby harbor seal. That's what I am. Don't bludgeon me. No, do not bludgeon me. <laughs> okay, I don't I don't think they're gonna bludgeon you. Who could bludgeon you? Nobody's gonna bludgeon you. Okay, thank you. I can I can rest peacefully now. Um can I have my ears back, Mom? Okay. All right. I'll I'll stop that. I know I can't help myself though. They're so cute and they're soft. I know. <laughs> um, so anything to report. You're supposed to be like a reporter, like, like official stuff. Okay. Um let's see. Okay. Um the craft room has not been cleaned since the messy craft room video. No. Okay. That's all I got. <laughs> okay. Well, that was, thank you for throwing your mother under the bus. Anytime, mom. Anytime. Um, you want better comments? More chicken. <laughs> oh, you're a little br bribing. <laughs> uh, I think that's what, it's not bribing. That's, um, blackmail. I think that's what you're doing. You're blackmailing your mother. No, I would never, I would never. And I like the skin. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, thank you very much. All right, okay, what, time for bed, son. Okay, good night, everybody. Happy crafting. Okay, there you go. All right, folks, I hope you had fun today. Um, I had fun with you. What on earth did we make? We made not much, but we, <laughs> we made a few of these. And they're fun. I know I made more than that. I at least made four. Okay, there was progress. Um, it was always a pleasure hanging out with you. If you don't know, I have a free monthly emailed newsletter. You get a free digital image, a checklist of supplies, a note from the bookmaker, and page list of ideas. My videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays, new audio material. Um, you can also watch video podcasts on Spot Spotify all the time. They're, they're going up almost every day. And I have an Etsy shop where you can find journals and bundles and kits when available. Um, my digi kits are printable, downloadable images. Um, there's five pages full of images. Print them out and use them in your artwork any way you like at home. And um, if you don't want to print or don't have a printer, I have a print and mail service for a flat fee. I will print out five digi kits, which gets you 50 pages of printed uh, images on lightweight cardstock. And um, all I need you to do is uh, buy, the, buy the print and mail um, option and then send me the list of the names to pam at the paperoutpost.com or through etsy message you don't need to buy the individual digi kits 
Um, I have an Amazon shop if you're looking for favorite tools and supplies. You'll find links there. Um, you, this does help my shop, but you do not pay more for these items for using my shop, so thanks for using those links. And also, I have... Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. A, what else have I got? Um, I have a merchandise shop, which is a t-shirt shop. If you like the phrase create with reckless abandon or everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise, you can get that on a t-shirt, zip hoodie, mug, tote, water bottle, sweatshirt. Yes. And great for gift giving or for yourself. You can find me on social media, on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Come and join our Facebook group. We're having a lot of fun over there doing weekly and monthly challenges. And remember that fun can be simple. And create with reckless abandon, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye.